about to start. I'm sorry, does anyone need a back rub first? Are you ready? Buckle up. Let's go! This shit is bananas. I'm ready to go now. I got the green light. Get out the way now. Yeah, watch out, here I go. That was unexpected. I'm a show, stop the show. Shove it up their butthole to stop babies from coming out. An eighth grader told me that. Whoa. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm a superhero. Show stopper, show stopper. Welcome to Buzz Talk Live, Industry Perspective. Tonight we go to Hollywood and welcome Seth Berkowitz, president of Series Promotions at Workshop Creative, a company that creates promotional trailers for movies and TV series releases. Workshop Creative has helped launch many successful shows, including Blackish, Fresh Off the Boat, The Goldbergs, and The Expanse on Amazon, to name a few. Seth, who is a creative marketer, writer, producer, director, an idea man. He also writes, produces, directs a comedy web series called Here's the Thing. Remember to use the chat function to spur a discussion tonight. So let's talk Hollywood with Seth Berkowitz. Welcome to the show, Seth. Hi. <laughs> you, you know, you cut to me at the perfect moment. The, the, we, have, we have three dogs in the backyard playing. And That's also, okay. You want to have them on the show? We can have them on the show. <laughs> George, your audience should know that, that we spent hours yesterday setting up the lights not realizing that of the course. sun would be going down right at this moment, which is why you could see the top of my head, but not the bottom of it. That's all right. But uh, you know what, I mean, Seth? The background is beautiful. <laughs> okay. Who needs to see me? Here's the background. There you go. And then, hey, is and that, put, uh, what are we looking at? That's a Hollywood Hills back there? What, what are we, no, no, no. We got? I actually, I, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you again, but I don't live in Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> I, and, and in fact, I do live in LA, but right now I'm not living in LA because uh, we're out here during the, uh, you know, for the uh, shutdown right. in a town called Ojai, which is about an hour and a half from LA. And it's, uh, I would say midway between LA and Santa Barbara, but actually closer to Santa Barbara. It's a little north and, and uh, west of, of LA. Okay. And, uh, so, so I live in LA most of the time, but right. uh, about eight weeks ago when things uh, start, when I started to work from home, right. Uh, we came out here. My, my girlfriend's dad lives here in Ohio by himself. He's 85 years old. And we wanted to just help him get the house stocked up with uh, supplies and everything. And then we said, gee, this seems like if, if we're going to be shut down, uh, 
this seems like the perfect place uh, to um, – there's a little, a little dog frenzy going on uh, here. Uh, <laughs> hey, the, Seth, it's the, live TV. Don't worry hey, about it. <laughs> the dogs do not respect the red light. They don't see that. To, to not, to not, uh, exactly, exactly. And, uh, so anyway, so so we've been out here now for eight weeks. I haven't been in L.A. in eight, eight weeks. I have no idea. I, other than what I see on TV, I have no idea what's going on. I'm going to take well, my sunglasses off now. It's that great, just, it's, it's great to have – it's great to have you on on Buzz Talk Live tonight. Uh, I had I had actually a computer issue just prior to me running the two minute clock, and I had oh, okay. to restart my so I could see the chats. So, you know, remember to chat out there, uh, folks, and uh, maybe we can get a question in for for Seth uh, during the show. Okay. And I uh, can't see the chat, so you'll have you, to. Tell you know, me don't worry about it. I'll 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 re- uh, relay uh, relay them to you. Um, if, if, any, if anybody insults me, just no, no, no. Uh, we weed out the insults, you know. Oh, well, you'll be busy. You'll be busy. <laughs> I, you know, I was telling you, my, my own friends, I started putting this on social media. I'm going to be on my own. People have known me my entire life were saying, why is he having you on? What is he going to ask you? About? So, so, <laughs> so people who know me a lot better than you, George, don't think I'm worthy. Of, ah, of stop it. Come on. Jesus. I mean, I've known you for a while now. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but let's let's rewind a little bit um, sure. and, and bring you back to your youth. Uh, and now, you know, from what I uh, I always thought you were a Brooklyn boy, but you're actually a Queens man. I'm, I'm one generation removed from Brooklyn. My, my parents were both uh, grew up in Brooklyn. My father grew up in Brownsville, my mother in the, um, East New York. Right. Uh, but I but I was born and raised in Queens and lived in Queens until uh, 97. So where where in Queens were you? I, I grew up in Bayside. I oh, wow. uh, I was born I was born in Flushing Hospital. I know you went to Flush. Uh, you're from Flushing. I was I was born in Flushing Hospital. How is it that we didn't meet? Oh, I don't know. We were uh, born together. <laughs> uh, I was born in Flushing Hospital. I grew up in in Bayside in, a, in an area called Windsor Park. Uh, for for those of you who are familiar with it, um, and then we when I was about twelve or thirteen, we moved to Douglaston. Uh, right. And people from the area will know it as the row houses near Corvettes. They had just been built at that time. Oh, sure. It was right, it was right near this shopping center. I was anchored by Corvettes. I think it's a multiplex now. I, I know it's not Corvettes. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all the changed. The yeah. Parkway, yeah. It's and, all um, yeah, so I grew up in Bayside and Douglaston and uh, went to Cardoza High School. So you went to Cardoza. That's where I wanted to go um, because of baseball, and it. and you know I played baseball back then, and 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 I and they had a terrific team. They did. Um, they did. You know, uh, but I my parents, you know, they sent me to John Bound. So, <laughs> but it was okay. The team over there was brought fine. you there and uh, brought me here. I I was right, not a right. good baseball player, but we did have a great team. The year that I uh, was a senior, uh, Cardoza went to the city finals. It was played at Yankee Stadium. Uh, and and they got to the finals. They got beat by uh, Abraham Lincoln. But the interesting thing is Abraham Lincoln's star was Lee Mazzilli that year. So oh, know, wow. got beat by the best. Yeah. Look at you, Lee Mazzilli. <laughs> Look at me. I, I didn't meet him or anything, but uh, but that's great. And so... I didn't know he was Lee Mazzilli until years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when um, when you were you know small and and you know you were you were getting into uh, mischief mischief and everything. What, what did you what did you want to inspire to be when you were uh, a youth, um, a youth, a youth, a youth. Um, you know, I'm trying to think. I, I don't remember having any particular ambitions until when I was in high school, when I was in Cardoza. They had a, a class at the time uh, taught by by a teacher named Peter Drew, um, and they called it cinematography. It's basically all about film and filmmaking. And, you know, at the time, nowadays, every college, every high school has programs on filmmaking. But back then, it was kind of new. And um, like when I went to Boston University after um there weren't a lot of schools that had film programs. So certainly not a lot of high schools. And I wonder if there was any public schools at the time besides ours that had that. And it was just one class. It was a great class. He was a great teacher. As it happens, I'm still in touch with him. I haven't seen him in years, but on, on Facebook. Uh, and he's a fascinating guy, uh, Peter, and, and musician. He's still making records. And uh, right, right. didn't know this until just recently, but he was also a Holocaust survivor. He was born in Germany. Oh, wow. And, um, and, and so he really, I think, ignited that idea of, First of all, loving movies and, and knowing that there was more to them than just entertainment, and also introducing me to the idea that a person could make a living in that industry. So, were you always like um, inspired by writing, or uh, like what what was your goal I was, there? I was, um, as you can tell from the way I'm working this camera here, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I'm not a wizard when it comes to lighting or uh, or um, composition. But uh, yeah, I was always, I, I think, I was always more attracted. To to the light, to the uh, writing part, right? Um, and to work with words, I always, I always 
tried to be funny. Um, my, my father was very funny. My father had taken a crack at comedy at one time. And, um, okay. and so I liked telling jokes, making people laugh. So I liked writing. I liked comedy. And as, as I matured in the business, I got to understand visual storytelling as opposed to just story storytelling. Oh, wow. uh, but that, you know, came, came with time. And, and what age did you start writing? Like, uh, you know, actually putting pen to paper and, and creating something. I'm trying to think like when was the first time I wrote something that wasn't assigned by a teacher? Um, it what I, I can guarantee it wasn't in, it wasn't before college and I'm not even sure if it was during college. Cause most of the time if I wrote, it was, it was for an assignment as opposed to just, you know, for the love of it. Um, mm. but I would say shortly after, um, uh, college, I started in addition to, to working as a writer and, and making a living as a writer. Mm-hmm. Um, I started, you know, writing things on my own. So, um, uh, you know, the, uh, what did I want to ask you? So w- when you, you were working in corporate, uh, AV, is that yeah. true? Yep. Which is, which is kind of how we met. Uh, you know, we, we met through a common friend, Rocky and, um, and yeah, so and- let's, uh, let's pause there. Uh, okay. our, our mutual friend, uh, Rocky Graziano, not the boxer, not uh, the boxer. right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, and he, you know, he, he goes by Rocky Graziano um, and yeah. he's a great guy and we both love he cl- him. He claims Rocky is his name on his birth certificate. I've never seen it. I'll take uh, his word for it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he claims his name. <laughs> we'll get the birth records, uh, Seth. We'll get the birth I, I just want to say, I'll never forget one day Rocky and I were playing golf and we were with two other guys and Rocky putts like 20 feet past the <laughs> cup and the guy goes, now I know why they call you Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful <laughs> so yeah i mean you know um the way we met wa- was through rocky obviously and and you know i used to always go to the west coast doing uh, a lot of his shows and uh you know we were out there my god it must have been sometimes twice a year uh mm-hmm. but mostly yeah. like every year and then we we grew a friendship and we played golf together and uh and parker remember uh yeah, you know, we, yeah. we played together there out there parker if you're of, out there hi yeah some some <laughs> you of might great, be watching if he's on it no absolutely he was, he's he's yeah. a great guy uh, he's, uh, yeah, yeah. i mean uh but you know then then you so at that time you were in corporate you weren't no, no, at workshop creative I, or no 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 i i was in corporate until I moved out to LA back in '96, uh, doing doing mostly oh, got gotcha, you right for for corporate clients. And then when I came out to LA, I pretty much right away transitioned into the entertainment business because I was able to do that full time. And I just I didn't really make that much of an effort to hold on to my corporate clients back east, with the exception of Rocky, who I've always maintained a friendship with. So every once in a while he'd call me with a job, but the stuff I was pursuing from 97 on was more in the entertainment business. And, and, and that's when I started doing that. And, and that's what I've been doing ever since. So you, you started writing and, um, and then you were, uh, so now I gotta, I gotta ask you, who are your favorite directors? Give me, give me oh. five, give me five give me famous five. directors that you, that you love to love their work. I, mean, okay. I don't want to put you on a spot. If you can't find five, it's fine. All right. Give me, give me uh, no, no, no. Well, I'll, I'll start with Billy Wilder, you know, starting chronologically. Billy Wilder was always of, of the of the old time classic guys. And, and it, you'll find a theme, I think, that most of my favorite directors tend to be right. writer directors because they because I, I'm, I'm, I'm more attuned to writing. But it, it's not a coincidence that guys who are great writers and directors, you know, are able to kind of bring the two together. So right. I, I would definitely start, you know, like of, of guys who are from before my time. Billy Wilder to me is, 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 he's it. Um, I, I know this could get me in trouble, but I still love Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Oh know, yeah, great, sure. Great movies. Um, I would say uh, the one guy who's not a writer, but an amazing director is Martin Scorsese. And and I almost didn't put him on the list because I never know. Is it Scorsese? Scorsese? I, I don't Scorsese. Know like an Scorsese. Scorsese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're Italian. You know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Marty. I'll call him oh, Marty. I know. Like, <laughs> I'll call him Marty like we're buds. You Marty, know? right, right, um, right. And um, uh, I love Tarantino, love Quentin Tarantino, and I uh, and I love the Cone Brothers. And I guess if you ask him directly, oh, nice. Joe, Joe Cone is the, the is the director of the two. But I, I love their movies. So you got a nice broad spe- spectrum of of directors. That's that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's awesome. I mean, I my since you said five, but I would say my my runners up would be an, another one. I can never know how to pronounce the name Stanley Kubrick or Kubrick, whatever, but Kubrick, I, him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then of the uh, more current guys, um, 
uh, Fincher and uh, Christopher Nolan, I would say. Oh, wow. The, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the Batman series, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, okay, so you moved to L.A. and mm-hmm. you got into this uh, promotional business uh, yeah. at Workshop Creative. Now, we was it no, – no, no. you built I that, started- right? Or – no, 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 no. That's, I don't want to take credit. Oh, by the way, speaking of which, I know at the beginning you showed a sizzle reel from Workshop, and all that stuff, very little of that stuff was stuff that I worked on. It's just that I'm out here, our office is closed, we're all working from home, so I don't have access to everything, but I knew I had this great sizzle reel that our digital group did, so I just want to give a shout out to, to, to Jeremy and Allie and the, 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 the digital group that, that does great work. Most of that stuff on there. And, and, as, and uh, as we speak, somebody is mentioning about the dogs. Uh, bring out the dogs. Uh, hi, Allie oh. and Basil oh. from uh, uh, Love Lover. Love Lover? I don't know who that Love. is. Love lover. It's got to be someone who knows not only my dog but our niece's dog. Ba- Basil is our niece's dog. Love lover. I'm trying to and think. And I think who that uh, Rocky be. was uh, was uh, chiming in as well. He was uh, big difference from Queens Boulevard um, to, uh, to where yeah, I am now. I mean, he's uh, he's watching. He's chatting. He's good, seeing good, it. Good. So, um, oh, so just to give you a little history. Um, so in the early '90s, in like '92. Uh, I started doing stand up in New York. Oh. And, and, um, uh, and, and that was a fun. I ended up be, doing five years of it. And um, so a, a friend of mine from the stand up world, a comic who I worked with a lot, who's since passed away, he rest in peace, Frank D'Amico, great, great comic. Um, so he had done a movie and it was going to be having a special screening out here. And I was like, you know what? Why don't I come out with Frank and see if I can get into some of the LA clubs, see if I can get a look there. Maybe I'll, you know, yeah. make a you know, whatever. Um, So I came out here and I got a few uh, spots at some of the local clubs. Nothing special happened, except I fell in love with LA. I was like, you know, I'd lived in New York all those years. And I was like, hey, and and I remember flying home, landing in JFK and and it was like (laughs) April and there was still snow on the ground. And you know how like by spring, the snow is that ugly gray, you know? So I'm like, why the hell am I living here when I could live there? It's so beautiful. What's not to like about uh, California, right? I mean, come on. Exactly. So a, a friend of mine, Robin, Robin Sanders, now Robin Borm, she and I went to BU together. Though she always makes me say that when she was a sophomore, I was a senior, so I'm way older than her. So she's a lot younger than me. But, <laughs> but Robin, um, she came to see me. I was, I was at the uh, comedy store one night. And she came to see me and brought her husband, Howard Borm. And he, uh, he said he thought I was funny. And he was the uh, director of comedy promotion at NBC. So... When I came home, I said, oh, man, I want to move to L.A. And I remember that Robin had said that her husband did something I might be able to get into. Oh, well. So I, I, I was going to say I emailed him. I don't even know if we had email back then. But I, no. I called him up and, and, uh, and he said he'd give me a shot at it. So he, he gave me and I'll never forget this. He, he called me up. He gave me an assignment. I, wor- I did the assignment and, and he told me later that I um, this is back in the days of facts before you know, sure. so I sent facts the facts and, and, facts, <laughs> and the fax cover machine had my name and, and, and my oh, area boy. code. Yeah. So his boss, who is from Philly, Vince Manzi, one of the big names in TV promotion. And as soon as he saw a Jewish name and a New York area code, he goes, oh, I bet this is going to be funny. So like, who knows <laughs> if I had had like a, you know, more of a waspy name, I, I may have still been back in New York. doing that. <laughs> but, but so, so I, I, and the first scripts I wrote got, it got produced, which at the time I thought was just a normal thing, but actually it, it wasn't. And I remember Howard, who's a Brooklyn guy, telling me afterwards, he goes, you know, when I called you with the job, I didn't tell Robin I was calling you because I didn't want to have to tell her if you sucked. That was, that was, uh, that was Howard's uh, diplomatic way of uh, giving me a shot. So, so he really got me started, and then he started giving me work, and then I started getting – then he went to work at Warner Brothers, so I was getting work from him at Warner Brothers and oh, wow. work okay. at NBC. And so then I decided – to move out to LA just because I loved it, but now I had a connection to get work there. So, like I said, I started right away getting that kind of work writing. And promo. so you, so that was the promotional work, right? That was yeah. So you were writing uh, promos for mm. for trailers or no, no. Well, for for at that time I was just working in TV, and and I oh, still okay. most, just, oh. I still work mostly in TV, but I I run the TV department at a company that used to just do movies, and I started. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. There. Wow, so you you must have seen a lot, man. I mean, my God. I'm, 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 I've got an NDA that tells me I can't tell you what I said. No, I, I know, I know you. Do. I know. <laughs> we won't, we won't discuss that. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh. So, all right. So, workshop creative. Then, um. Now, I remember you saying something about they didn't have a department or something. Uh, they and- didn't, but actually, 
Well, let me, I'll, I'll give you the, uh, I know the, you want um, to put it in order. Go ahead. Right. All right. So I came out here, I was working as a freelancer for six months. Um, I went to a, 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 a convention called Promax, which is a convention of the, of the promo industry. Right. And, and I see a guy and Howard had pointed him out to me once. Cause we were in a restaurant once and he was there. The guy's name was Stu Weiss and he owned a company called studio city. So, um, Stu, I, I saw him and I recognized him. I'm like, Oh, let me go hit that guy up for some work. So I, I go over and I introduce myself. And as I'm talking, I see his eyes like rolling up in his head, like, Oh God, another person. Like I'm here trying to hustle work from <laughs> yeah, other right, people right, right. and people are trying to hustle work from me. So I'm talking to him and he goes, listen, you live in LA. I said, yeah. He goes, when we get back to LA, give me a call, you know? And he's walking away and I say, Oh, okay. I'll call you. My name's Seth Berkowitz. And he stops in his tracks. And what happened was I had written um, a series of spots for NBC. It was the year that the, 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 the parents, uh, Paul Reiser and Helen Hunt, I'm mad about you. We're going to have a baby. And that was the cliffhanger. So during the summer, they wanted to do a, a series of promos right. featuring famous TV parents, giving advice to the parents. I'm mad about you. So, so, uh, Jill Underhill, by this time, Howard had moved on to Warner and Jill Underhill had taken his place and she hired me to write these spots for um, Mad About You. And I ended up writing like 70 scripts for like 20 different spots for, you know, and, and we had everybody. We had uh, Howard Marion from um, uh, um, Happy Days and wow. George and Weezy from the Jeffersons. Wow. And we had uh, Barbara Billingsley and, and um, June Lockhart. And I think you might have one of those I, spots. I do have a clip from uh, Mad About You. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, uh, let me, yeah. yeah, let me roll that. For the new parents of Mad About You. There's so much to protect your child from these days, and you can't be there all the time. And that's why it's great that you have a dog. Now, all you have to do is practice with Murray so you'll understand his bark. Now, this <coughs> means the baby has fallen into the well. Whereas this <coughs> means the shed is on fire. It's all about communication. Mad About You, now with Baby Added. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that's so it's so raw and old it, i can appreciate <laughs> that the whole format and everything the four three format it's great yeah yeah so, I'm, you know I'm, i have to say uh, just a little peek behind the curtain yeah i can't see the clips when george rolls them so that's it's right a good thing he, it's a good thing he laughed at the end or else i wouldn't have known it was over <laughs> <laughs> well that's what you paid me for right no, yeah you know. <laughs> and money well spent <laughs> right um, so anyways, so, yeah. so just, so, so, um, and, and I just got to tell you one thing about Estelle Harris. So, um, the, uh, so, I mean, it was like an amazing day where one after another, all these TV idols from my childhood and, and more recently were coming yeah. in and getting Isn't that filmed. amazing. Yeah. And, 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 and I thought, okay, this is what's going to be my life from now on. I'm going to be going to shoots and I'm going to meet the act. I've never had another day like that. It's 23 years ago. I've never had another day <laughs> like that. But I thought that that was going to be, but Estelle Harris comes in. And uh, at one point, the the uh, the makeup person comes out and asks me, "Did you write the spots?" And I said, "Yeah." And she says, "Estelle wants to meet you." Said, okay. So I come back, and there's Estelle Harris from Seinfeld, like my favorite show. And she says, "You know, I, I'm not going to try to imitate." She goes, "She goes, I was telling the girl how good the script was, and she said, would you like to meet the writer?" So I said, yeah. "So I, so she comes out and she says, so tell me.'" And, and I'm telling her my life story. And when she finds out I had just moved out to L.A., mm -hmm. she says, "Oh." Your parents must be so proud. And that, <laughs> the thing you have to realize is I'm 41 at the time. But how old, how the old right... was she? How old was she at that time? You, about. Uh, you know, I don't know. And I didn't ask. And I'm no, not going to know. I know. You, I'm, you know. Yeah, but yeah. She, let's just say I was 41. She was a little older. I don't, I don't know how old she is now. Yeah. She's still with us. Thank God. Yeah. But she was so great. And, and she was telling me how much she liked the scripts. And I'm like, oh, my God. My That's parents awesome. aren't proud of me now. But when I tell them that yeah, I met, right. <laughs> Mrs. Costanza, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then it was funny. She came out and, and I had written three scripts where they'd sent her three scripts, but we were behind running behind. So they did one. She nailed it in two takes and they said, okay, thanks. She goes, what about the other ones? And they go, no, we, we're, we're running late. She goes, let me do one more. I'll mail it in the first take. And sure enough, she did. What and, a pro. Yeah. You know, yeah. She was great. Yeah. She, was great. she so seemed anyway, like a great lady. So I see Stu Weiss at this thing. He's leaving. He says, call me in L.A. And I said, OK, my name's Seth Berkowitz. And he stops his tracks. And he turns around. And he goes, did you write the Mad About You parent spots? I said, yeah, I did. He goes, oh, because I need a guy to I, we just got hired to do the uh, promo to the launch of the Keenan Ivory Wayans show. And I need a guy who could write and produce comedy. And I was asking at NBC who wrote that. And they told me your name. And he goes, come on, come to come, come to lunch with me. 
and he brings me to lunch with the whole staff and he's introducing me like he just hired me. And people said, when are you going to start? And I'm like, I don't know. He didn't hire me yet. He just met me and asked me to come to lunch. But that's what started. And I ended up being there for three years. Wow. And, um, wow. Yeah. So what, like what's, what's, uh, what's your favorite script that, that, you've, uh, that you've wrote? I mean, I know that I'm, you know, jostling your brain there. But, I mean, uh, as I, far you know as. What? I, uh, I mean. I, no, I, I don't know what it is, but I can tell you whatever it was didn't get shot because you know how it is. Like they never pick the one that you like. Of course, of course. Um, I uh, um, and you would think in Hollywood they need come on they need material out there. They, they need they, material, but 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 their idea of what you know, like the person who hires you, their idea may not be what your idea is. And, exactly. And, and that's where I learned the important thing, which is. You send them choices. But if there's something you really don't believe in, don't send it because inevitably that'll be the one they pick. Exactly. It's like, uh, what, what is it called? Uh, whack-a-mole. <laughs> it's like whack-a-mole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, and oh, you know, um, so I don't know if you want to jump ahead because it relates to the story of The Expanse that I know you have a piece. So, but, yeah, so, uh, so leading up to Expanse. Now, Workshop Creative, they didn't have, let's get back yeah. to that okay. because so, they didn't so, have so a just, department, yeah. right? Or something? Right. So, so I was at Studio City for three years and then I decided, you know, I wanted to see what else was out there. And actually the first company I went to was a company called The Ant Farm, which at the time was like the biggest movie trailer company. Uh, and this was in 2000. And they were doing TV work, but they didn't have a TV department. And so I reached out to The Ant Farm and as it turned out, um, they were looking for somebody to, to handle TV because they were not noticing that it was different than movies. The, right, the, right. the pace is different. Sure. It's just a lot. And there's a whole different crew of people that, that give the work out because they're different places. And so it was the, changing back then. TV was changing. Yeah. When, uh, I, when I went to the Ant Farm in 2000, great place, great editors. Parker was one of them. But no matter what, when I would walk into the, to the edit bay of a, of a guy who did a lot of movie trailers and say, I need him to do a TV job, their reaction would always be, oh, who did I piss off? Because the TV was considered like, <laughs> it was considered like the, the ugly stepchild of compared to movies. Uh, so that was in 2000. I was there for four years, great years. And I you know built up a, a TV department there. And then um, I had a few other, uh, I, I was at a company called BLT for a year. And um, the, 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 it was a great company. They did mostly print, had a, an AV department. But the, the great thing that happened there was that I met my girlfriend, Randy, who I'm still with now. We, oh, wow. we both worked there. So that's how, that's nice. how we met. Um, and then, so, so I got I got I got okay, so you. Yeah, but I got to interrupt out. you. So there's there's that one voice that everybody hears uh, on these movie trails. You know the voice. Yeah. You know the guy. That guy. The guy. The guy. That guy. Well, yeah. Where did that guy come from? Well, you'd be surprised, but there's there's, <laughs> there's more than one guy. There's but, more than one guy. <laughs> there's always like one guy who's like the guy. Right. And 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 when I was coming into the business, it was Don LaFontaine uh, who passed away a few years ago. But amazing, amazing voice. Yeah. And and uh, before him, it was Ernie Anderson. Ernie Anderson's the father of the director Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh. Um, which reminds me also, I left this guy out. Wes Anderson is one of my favorite directors. Not that I don't think Wes Paul Anderson. Thomas Anderson wow. could do, but okay. Wes Anderson's a great director. But so, but since since um, Don. Uh, LaFontaine passed, I think there's more of like several guys, but they all have that. Yeah. And, and now there's a little bit more of a, a, a natural conversational feel that's become more popular. Right. Than what and you know what, Seth, guys. with technology, they can sweeten the voice and they can make yeah. them sound really nice. Um, it's funny. One, one of the guys who's yeah. one of the main guys now is named Ashton Smith. And I remember the first time I read him, um, he, he does this thing where he kind of like when he's recording, he kind of sounds like he's whispering into the mic. And I was about to say, you know, that's not going to register. And I'm like, this guy reads more trailers in one day than I'll produce in a year. So maybe I'll just let him do it the way he does it. And sure enough, then when you get it and you cut it and you go like, oh, my God, that's perfect. But when you're recording it, it sounds like he's whispering. Yeah, how am I supposed to do yeah, that? Yeah. But he knew how to work the mic. So so we have uh, we have some some tweets, uh, some tweets. Listen to me. Uh, some chats yeah. coming in. Um, uh, F. Salicito wants to know what's the process. He wants to know mm -hmm. what the process is. Um, and the future. Oh, uh, future. I, I don't know what he means by that. By that. Um, yeah. So I mean, uh, that. Well, what What is the I process uh, of doing me, that? Me, you know, it's funny because you. I I kept pushing back to go, but so so I I ended up at workshop. I got there in two thousand nine. I've been there now, going on eleven years, and um and and one of the projects we did there was the expanse, and um mm -hmm. uh. 
and 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 the the sample that you have that I gave you, um, I think you should show it, and then I'll tell you yeah. why that's a good thing to explain the process with. Okay, here we go. We meet in an hour of change and challenge, in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance. The greater our knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. For the eyes of the world now look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace and understanding. For science has no conscience of its own. Whether it will become a force for good or ill depends on man. For we do not now know what benefits await us. Its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. Wow, that was awesome. I gotta, I gotta check that series out. I mean, that, that's. Can you hear can me? Hear. You, you can't hear me. All right. Um, I can hear you. Uh, I, can, I can hear you now. I okay. Can hear you, now. you must have muted something. Um, that, that's uh, what a series, man. I got, I got to check that yeah, out. You yeah. Should. Um, no. Uh, no, I the, didn't. The I didn't. Mo- it, it, it's, it's based on going to the moon or something, right? Or, or. No, no. Uh, well, very close. It, it takes place in 200 years in the future, The Expanse. Great show, by the way. Anybody who's out there who, who even if you don't like sci-fi, it's a great yeah, show. Yeah, no, it looks um, really good. So it, it's based in 200 years. And at this point, they've already gone to Mars and colonized Mars and all that. So what we did was, in order to um, promote the new season, uh, uh, an editor by the name of Clay Janicki, who uh, I happen to have played golf with today, um, uh, had this idea that, he just, and, and what happened, okay, so the process, somebody had asked about the process. Right. So we'll get the episode, sometimes we get the dailies of the episodes before they've even edited them, and mm. we'll get the scripts. And we start, you know, putting things together. Editors will go through every second, and they do a very complex um, selecting of moments. You know, not just great lines, but great head turns, great little quick little shots, everything. And, and they do a meticulous job of selecting everything so that they can always have access to that. And like, oh, I need a shot of this character. Oh, I need a dramatic shot. I need a happy shot, you know, whatever. And, and you really have to log them very, very exactly. Right, right. So then, you know, we get an assignment. And in this case, we had the assignment to cut a trailer for the season. And they weren't planning on doing a teaser. Teaser is a trailer that like comes a little bit earlier that just sort of gives you a little taste of it. Um, so we were cutting a trailer. Clay was cutting a t- trailer. And he had this idea. I, I had nothing to do with it. Um, he had this idea. He had heard this speech uh, that Carl Sagan once did called The Pale Blue Dot. And he decided that it, it really spoke to what the series was about. And so he cut this on his own, like on the weekends, he cut this teaser to, to The Pale Blue Dot. Uh, now, you, you've got a confused look on your face because you said that wasn't Carl Sagan. That was JFK. Right. Right. That's part of the process. Ah. Um, so what happened was, so we cut this teaser and everybody loved it. The client loved it. Her yeah, boss loved yeah, it. Her boss's yeah, boss. Yeah, everybody yeah, loved it. Yeah. They showed it to the little crew, everything. Everything's going fine. And then they run into a roadblock. Carl Sagan's widow will not sell the rights or assign the rights to, to let us use this speech. And uh, we went through and, and, you know, Amazon's got a lot of resources. They went through yeah, every channel they yeah. could. And then it's like, we don't want to let this die. So what can we do? So they said, you know, see if you can find another great piece of, uh, you know, great speech or, or write something. Yeah. And then um, the, the producer on it, LaShawn, uh, LaShawn Rivers, uh, went home that weekend. And when he came in on Monday, he said, what about JFK's, you know, we do this because yeah. they're, 
it's from that same thing. We do things not because they're easy, but because they're hard. Right. And he'd come in on Monday morning and Clay was already cutting to that speech. The two of them over the weekend, wow. you know, came up with this idea. You'll notice I had absolutely nothing to do with it. All I did <laughs> was, was take was, credit for it. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it, let, it, I got to ask you, and, and uh, maybe I'm, I'm uh, you know, but that's uh, that's a big part of the process is right. you can have a great idea, you can have a great execution. You always have to have a backup because you never know what snag you're going to run into. And that's so, part of it. so us laypersons that that don't yeah. understand the process of of movie trailers, mm-hmm. and me as a as just a viewer and kind of understanding, uh, you know, uh, movies and and how they're made and everything. When I'm looking at a trailer, and it could be for any picture, okay, yeah. Um, some trailers are very short and mm-hmm. it, it, it almost likes they don't want to give away the movie. And mm-hmm. then other trailers, they're, they're like movies. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the trail is like a movie. And it's like uh, I, I, I was like watching something with my wife and I'm like, oh, I guess, you know, we, we saw we saw that movie. You right, know, let's right. go to that. So I don't know if that plays into the process that you're talking about and, well, you know, where that leads to in, in creating something like this. And, and that's evolved over time. Um, years ago, um, they used to try to hide some of the bigger moments. And, you know, they would never show certain big reveals or, or, or whatever. Um, and a lot of times the filmmaker has a lot to say in it too. Sometimes the studio wants to show more because their, their research has shown that the more you show, more people will come, even though it might ruin something. Right, you know, right, them. right. But um, the, uh, um, but, in, in, but a lot of times the filmmaker will say, no, you can't use that shot. Oh. You know, and, and and depending on how much clout they have, and depending on you know whatever, um, you know sometimes they win, sometimes the studio does. Uh, the the key is, you know, you don't want to show everything, um, but you want to show enough to get people interested. Right. And but also, you even if you do give away too much, you want to get the feel, give the feeling that you held back just enough that there's still a reason to go watch it. Mm-hmm. But it seems with with younger audiences there's more of a sense of that, that, that they don't care if they feel like they've seen it, they want to see it in the context of the movie. Yeah. Um, which is another trend I think I've noticed in recent years where it used to be, we took a lot of time to set up the story. What is the story about? Mm-hmm. Whereas now we just go for the moments. We just go for the moment that makes someone say, oh, and I want to see. Yeah, and, I, and I think the, with a sci-fi film, um, mm-hmm. you know, a longer trailer is valid because there's yeah. so many there's so many visual effects and so many mm-hmm. CG that y- you need to kind of show it off and show off the movie and 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 the producers of it. Yeah. Um so yeah, I could totally understand. So if it's a talking head and, movie, it's going to be, you know, kind of a short uh, And that's another thing about a teaser versus a trailer. Right. Um, a teaser tends to come early on and at that point especially if it's a, an effects heavy movie, they may not have a lot of the effects yet. Right. So they say, "Okay, how can we sell this with like one great see right. in fact I, I've right. got something coming up that, that, that does that. But, um, you know, so, so, and, and that's the other thing you got to give just enough because you know that they're going to want, like if, if you're want launching more, the first right. trailer six right. months early, yeah. you got to have another one in two months, another one, two yeah. months after that. Yeah. And then as it yeah. gets close TV spots and you don't want to just show the same bites. Right. Um, right. Well, I, I'll tell you, that's a lot on your plate to be creative with the dailies that, that come in and, and, uh, the doing everything that you do. And, and you make uh, the make the movies, uh, you know, profitable down the road. I mean, people want to go to see the films. They go to see the films, you know, because of your work. You know? <laughs> and and it's a very, you know, it's a competitive landscape in terms of how much. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. I mean, and how much to see, you know, you're, you're really fighting for eyeballs with, you know, so many channels and so many. So what uh, workshop creative now, uh, who do they compete with as far? Who's it? Do they have a, is your landscape uh you know, Phil, yeah, that, that too is very competitive. And, and, and much, again, much more so than when I first came out here 20 years ago, right. um, back then, you know, I'm going to say they were like, um, you know, like a half a dozen major players and then some smaller ones. And what's happened, you know, back in uh, the late nineties, early, uh, two thousands. Um, if you wanted, well, you probably know, cause, cause you've been producing mm-hmm. stuff, but, um, I don't remember what year the first nonlinear system came out, like Avid, you know, for editing. Um, But when it first came out, Mm -hmm. you needed about $100,000 just to set up one edit bay. So it wasn't something that every person could have on their laptop to do. So only a company that had some financing, had some muscle behind it could, like if, if you needed five or six editors, that's five or six bays, half a million dollars just to get off the ground. Yeah, I mean, the days um, of uh, when Avid came out, that, that sped up the process tremendously in, in doing yeah. uh, all that and stuff. It, and, it, 
you know, you could you could really look at any trailer. It's almost like soundies. You could look at any trailer that was made before nonlinear editing, and the pacing was different. Everything was yeah. different, and, and the process. Now, uh, but and adding, I, I know we're gonna we're gonna get to HBO and and Curb, but yeah. uh, as far as a future of of making trailers and and doing this work, where do you see the the future of your business going? You know, it's not only an interesting question, but an interesting time to be asking it because obviously. Um, You're not going anywhere right last, now. <laughs> what's happened in the last couple of months, yeah, with uh, ever since COVID hit, has greatly impacted the entertainment business and has greatly impacted our segment of the entertainment business. Uh, because the question is, when will movie theaters be open and when will movie theaters be able to seat people right. side by side as opposed to six feet apart? Because that really, if, if, if we're looking at, you know, like, there are some movies like a Marvel movie or a, a you know a DC one of those big effect heavy kind of movies. Um, you not only want to see it in a theater, you want to see it in a crowded theater. You want to see oh, yeah, it, absolutely. You know, it with that energy. And if you can't have that, and and those are those are the ten pole movies. Those are the movies that cost the most. Those are the movies yeah. that make the most. If you can't have that, that yeah, you know. And and to be honest, I don't yeah. know what the future is. Well, I'll tell you, um, we're going back to the future over here on the East Coast because they're doing drive-ins. Yeah. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, but they're showing like, you know, movies from the past and uh, they might as I, well show back to the future. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's funny, the first time I saw that posted, <laughs> I posted like on, on social media, like, oh my God, I'd love to go to a drive-in. And I, it, it got so many responses from people who remembered like being a kid going to the drive-in and, you know, but, but so, and we were entering a, new, a whole new world anyway because streaming had become so big and now there were so many players and competitors in that. And then the, the, what happened now with COVID and with theaters, you know, not being able to show theaters has accelerated. It, it's changed, but also accelerated something that was already happening. Right. And, um, but then also nothing's being shot now. Hopefully things will open up soon. We'll be able to start shooting things. So yeah. right now we're in kind of a holding pattern in right. general. Right. So I don't really know what the, what's going and, and also, you're seeing a lot of things like this. You're seeing a lot of like, like uh, Jimmy Kimmel show, Jimmy Fallon show. They look just like yours, George, except you're, they don't yeah, get the big exactly. desks. Like yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's but, right. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, so, so now that, that people have gotten used to this very like laid back, informal, imperfect style of production, yeah. It changes yeah, everything. But so Seth, nothing that, will go back I mean, to the come way on. it is. Uh, this guy, we got to get back to social. We got to get, you know, th there's got to be a, I I envision this sh this show in mm -hmm. five years. I'll be sitting on a couch with a guest. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm backstage uh, switching a show. That that's what I want. <laughs> but anyway, so um, uh, HBO, you you did yeah. something with HBO and Curb that uh, yeah. uh, you know. So I mean, Larry David, my God, you know everybody knows I yeah. I love the show. I mean, it's it's great. So how did you get involved with uh, with HBO? So the crazy thing for, for 20 years, I, I've been trying to knock, you know, the knocking on that door. And it's very hard because they do great, great work, but they do a lot of in-house. They don't, they don't go outside to, to, to trailer and promo companies as often as, as, as not. Right. Um, we had a great editor at workshop named Michael Skeins and um, he left and, and went to HBO and got a job in, in at, at HBO where he edits, but he also produces and, and hires editors. So, you know, we were knocking on his door, knocking on his door, you know, mm -hmm. keeping in touch. And then, and, and Workshop really specializes in comedies. In addition to, to the ones you mentioned that I've worked on that I've helped launch, um, uh, we do a lot of Judd Apatow movies. Uh, we got the, the King of Staten Island just came out this weekend. Uh, a lot of Seth Rogen movies. So we're known for comedy. And, and Michael had a show called Crashing, if you remember it. It was uh, in it going into its third, what turned out to be its third and final season. Mm -hmm. And he needed a new campaign. And so he, he hired us to do that. Oh. And it was great. It, it, it turned out well, except for the fact that the show went off the air. <laughs> uh, but then, so once we got our foot in the door, they would call us for things. And then I, I get called by uh, uh, another fellow there, Eddie Maldonado, to see if, if we can work on Curb. And oh my God, I love Curb. You yeah, know, who doesn't, it, right? It, you know, yeah, and 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 I love the style. It's you know, kind of invented its own style of awkward comedy. And, yes, and yes. So, um, so he just wanted to do a teaser because, um, you know, they they hadn't been on the air for like two years, and nobody knew if they were coming back for another season. So they announced that it's coming back. So they already had the theme. The the wait is over. They wanted to do something. With the wait is over. So, but they didn't want us to show anything from the new season. So we went through all nine seasons, picking oh little God. moments 
that yeah, spoke yeah, to yeah. the weight is over, the weight is over. And we cut versions and we cut versions, we cut versions and we cut so many different versions. And, 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 you know, let's add this, let's attract this. And then they got this episode and it had this scene in it and it was perfect. So, so we cut a version uh, of a name, Alec Camacho, a uh, great editor, cut a version. <laughs> and it's just with that one scene. And, and the funny thing is, I, you want to show it and then I can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, uh, no, let's, let's take a look. Yeah. Do you have an appointment? I don't have an appointment. Do you need to see the doctor? Uh uh. Can I ask what you're doing? I needed somewhere to wait, and this is a waiting room. You're just using this waiting room to wait. That's perfect. Wow. That, so you nailed it, man. That that's great. Uh, great great I, idea. It was it was a great idea, but but I mean the funny thing is so this scene existed and we cut it as a spot and it was like, oh gee, it's perfect. And on the one hand, I keep wanting to push the stuff that we edited, but I, but every time we would try something else and go, right. it's not as good as that one scene. So so then the funny thing is it comes out, I post it, you know, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and people go, Oh my god, that's so great. And then I realized <laughs> They're thinking I wrote this. They're thinking that I went out and hired Rebecca Romaine to be in a, a, a promo. <laughs> and and so like, but it's like, I don't want to tell them I didn't, but I didn't want to take credit for it. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. and and the funny thing is the people who are in the promo business and know go, yeah, but you, you and, and, and Alex did a great job with the music. And, and even though it didn't take a lot, everything had to be perfect, you know, to, to work as it does. But, you know, other people go like, so what did you do? And I'm like, well, I had enough sense to say, yeah, that's good. You know? Yeah, right, right, right. But, but, um, but that, and, just and then, get out of the way. If it works, just and, get out of the way. And then, and then the funny thing is the episode is like the fourth episode in the season. When it comes out, there's people saying to me, they use your promo in the episode. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what they did. They used your promo. <laughs> let's, let's, let's go with that. I don't need to be correcting people. <laughs> So, so uh, you know, let's 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 talk about your uh, your baby. Uh, here's the thing. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. I mean, I I find myself saying that uh, when I talk. That, that shows the impact I've had on the culture. Nobody said here's the thing until I came out with my. There you go. There you go. I mean, so so you took a, 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 a you know, basically, uh, you know, a uh, conversational piece. Here's the thing. And then you'll, and then you created a show. No, well, actually I created the show and then I came up with the name. Um, I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to, rem I'm trying to remember what originally, cause originally if, if I look at the early scripts that had a different name and I'm trying to remember what the, uh, what the, uh, interesting, I forget what the name was, but, but I, but I said, I don't like this name so much. Let me come up with another name. And the thing is, as much as everybody says, here's the thing. I say it more than most. And in fact, I used to have um, I used to have this guy that worked with me, and I'd say, "Here's the thing," and he'd go, "Oh, there's a thing," and I'm like, "There's always a thing." There's and always a thing. So right. That was that was always like I. So even though it's everybody's expression, I felt it was like my expression. The funny thing is, people will say after they've seen the show that now they notice how often other people say here the, and I always say, "Gee, if there was only some way I could make a nickel every time someone says here's the thing," you know. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, I stole it from uh, Alec Baldwin had his show before mine. And uh, I think I told you the story. I, yeah. I asked someone, could he sue me? And and they said, that would be the best thing to ever happen to your show. You'd exactly. get that much attention that Alec Baldwin sues you. Like he but that's about. funny how he has the same show. I mean, but is it based on the same? No, it can't be, right? No, I mean, no his, just, his show is, no, he, it's, it's, an, it's, it's a radio podcast and it, where he interviews people. Oh, and he interviews okay. them on any number of topics. And it's kind of like, you know, the Seinfeld, you know, Larry right, right. thing is like, right. what's the show about? It's about nothing. It's about a couple that argues a lot. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. um and basically the way it started, I mean, I don't want to say it's based on my girlfriend or myself, but it's based on me and a woman not to be named at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but I, I'm one don't of name names. Who, I'm one of these people who overthinks a lot, and and I happen to be in a relationship with someone who just kind of shoots from the hip and and there and, you go. Uh, and and I, I'll tell you how it sort of started. It's like salt um, and pepper. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, oil one and vinegar. My, <laughs> one, of, one of my coworkers was having, was having a wedding. And so we're sitting at a table, mostly with people from the company. And, um, and, and Randy's talking about 
uh, an upcoming birthday that I have. And I'm like trying to like kick her under the table because, and, and I said to her, I'm like, don't talk about it. Cause I was going to have a party. And she goes, she goes, why not? And I'm like, cause we can't invite everybody from the company. You know, uh, it's, it's, you know, and, and uh, there's some people here I was going to invite and some people I wasn't planning on it. Cause she says, so invite who's at the table. I'm like, yeah, but then if I invite them, other people will wonder. And she says, Seth, you work with a bunch of 30 year olds. None of them wants to go to a 60 year old birthday party. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, you got a point. You got a point. But but that was like a typical thing. So that actually inspired the first script that I wrote. And then I just started writing scripts with the idea of like, I don't know what I'll do with this. And then I saw a friend of mine who's a writer and an actor um, did a did a, a a web series that involved her and another actor, and and they played a couple. And I noticed that they were shooting a scene, just the two of them, in every room of the house to make it look like it's a different scene. And I was like, that's exactly what I want to do. So I asked her, how much did it cost you? To, and she told, and when I found out how cheap it is to do that nowadays with the equipment we have, I said, now I can't afford not to do it. So I yeah, went ahead and, exactly. and you know, I, I did a you Put all your creative juices together. And uh, so yeah. you got, uh, it's it's been up for like two seasons, right? It has, yep. And I got the, some the, print here to show the both seasons print oh, okay. of, of it. Yeah. Um, so you got the first season and the second season up there now. And um and I noticed that the second season, it looks like people having a party. So yeah, yep. yep. The, uh, so, so the first season, really, almost every episode is um, is um, uh, Josh and Linda, the, right. the, the couple, right. Right. Uh, who's played by you can see there in the picture, uh, Shannon is the guy, and and Kylie uh, Shannon Holmes. Let me let me give a proper plug. Shannon right. Holmes, the right. guy, right. Kylie Del Rey, and and I got to tell you something. So I I put you know there's, there's casting services where you put in. Um, ads for actors and i got 600 responses 300 men 300 wow. women wow for for this web series that you know could be nothing could be something yeah, wasn't yeah. like and and some of them were really really good like shockingly good you know how good the actors were and um and and it's funny because originally i was thinking in the larry david mode that the character would be like it would be a Nebuchadnezzar Jewish guy. And then we get this guy, Shannon, he's a tall, handsome, like Irish looking guy. Right. But he totally nailed the part. And I'm like, oh, that makes me see the character different. Uh, plus, I could say that this young, handsome guy looks <laughs> is, is me. Is me, is me. <laughs> yeah. So so um so the first season was just the two of them, various situations, various arguments, mm -hmm. and and with the two characters. And, and I remember when it, the first episode came up, my friend Tom says, I want to strangle both of them. And I'm like, you get it. That's exactly what I was going for. Exactly. You know? um, so now I do have a trailer uh, for yeah. season one. You want to show that? Okay, yeah, why don't you show that? Okay, here we go. Hi, Josh. Mm, I ran into Amy. We are having lunch. When do you think you'll be home? Mm, an hour. Maybe a little bit longer. Why? They said it's going to rain. So? And I have to go out again at three. And? If I park in the garage, where are you going to in the driveway. Damn. What? That's a long story. Aren't they all? The limit is 15 to get in the express line. Two cars is 30. Brad and Katie do not like each other. I just don't like to disappoint people. Oh, you have made that abundantly clear. I'll tell her, and then I'll tell you that she wasn't that disappointed, and then you won't have to feel bad. Does that work for you? No, because you just told me your whole plan. Just ask Sherry if it's okay to give Nick her number. Do I tell him that she's trans? No. Do I tell her he doesn't know she's trans? How do you know that he doesn't know? You should park in the front and let me have the garage. That's what I was thinking. So you could have just done it. You didn't need to call me. Here's the thing. No. You don't really want to park out front. You just want credit for offering. I'm doing that thing that you do where you overanalyze every little thing about every conversation. Okay, here's 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 the here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You say that a lot. Well, there's usually a thing. Nope. Did you just hang up on your husband? Yeah, he was done. Besides, if I didn't hang up on him, I'd never get off the phone. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Here's the thing. There's yeah. always a thing. There's always, There's a, always thing. a thing. So, and, and also in the in the first season, he says here's the thing at least once in every episode, sometimes twice. Right, right, you know, right, right, right. No, that's that. perfect, man. That's a, what a, what a hook. So, that's great. Yeah, and um, yeah. So so we had the first season, and so it was all them until the very last episode, and then I decided to do one episode with a third person, and um, and we got this actress uh, 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 who I knew, uh, Tangerine Thomas, to play. Um, but I don't want to give anything away, but she, yeah, yeah. she actually shows up in a couple of episodes. 
but but she plays a friend of um of, of uh, um um Linda. I, I I get mixed up between the actors' names and the real name. Linda is a character. Uh, Kylie, who's great, is 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 the actor who plays her, and um. So, and a lot of people said they liked the episode because it's like, oh, we got to see him with a third person. So for the second season, um, I decided, oh, let me bring in more people. Let me show them interacting in other situations. Right, right, and then right. the, the funny thing that happened was um, in between Kylie had moved to a different city. So we had to really like schedule it and figure out a time to do all the shooting of all the episodes. And she said, oh, you know, I'm going to be in Las Vegas. Uh, I've got a birthday coming up and maybe we could shoot it the week of my birthday. So we were thinking of doing that, but it also gave me the idea of like, oh, why don't I build the whole season around it's her birthday and he wants to throw her a party and she doesn't want to have the party. And then Shannon sends me an email saying, hey, I let my hair grow out in its natural color and I grew a beard. Oh. Let me know if you want for the second season, if you want me to shave it off. And I'm like, no, let's make that a plot point also. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that became a running theme through the second season. The fact that, that he had let his hair go gray and it was actually attracting a lot of attention from younger women because he's now a silver fox. <laughs> silver fox you know about right. that, like how right, you know, right, you know right. young women go crazy for us, right? And then, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and and it was pissing her off. And then also that she was having this birthday. She didn't want to have a party. She didn't want to make a big deal. She didn't want to attract attention to it. And he was hell bent on on throwing a party. So that sort of became running theme through the second season. All right. Okay. So I got um, season two uh, trailer as well. Yeah. So that. okay. Here we go. Oh, since you can talk about anybody, you'd be the perfect person to settle an argument between Linda no, and me. No, Josh. When did his hair turn so gray? That silver fox daddy thing, that's the best movie ever made. Can I get some of that? Oh, you can have a drink if that's what we're talking about. It's not like you guys have only one argument going on. Whatever it is. Yeah, I want to throw Linda a birthday party. Here's to my handsome husband, finally figured out that dinner for two beats a party every time. Parties are nice too. What the? F here's the thing. But here's the thing. No, here's the thing. Cause here's the thing. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, uh, that's great. I mean, uh, what? I, I I gotta ask the question: Is that um, more characters? Uh, you know, more roles in in here's the thing. Does that create uh, a writing problem for you as far as, you know, um, uh, having different characters play off of others and, and, and writing? Uh, because, I mean, the first season was a select amount of actors, yeah. correct? And then yeah. the second season, now it kind of blew up a little bit. There's more actors. There's, there's more, uh, you know, a lot of things to talk about. So, you know. Yeah, I would relations. actually say in a, way, in a way it makes it easier because the first season, you know, we don't know them. So there's right. a lot of things to cover, but there's only so much you can have with the two of them that is going to make it continue to be interesting without bringing in or, you know, if they're talking about other people, you'd rather see the people as well. So I think having a third or fourth person to bounce things off of, um, yeah, it's true. you know, kind of it, it's still based about them and their little proclivities. Um, and also, once again, there are just so many great actors out there that are available and and I was able to you know, find some that really were, were terrific. So I think it kind of, you know, opened it up and expanded it a little bit better. So I, I like both seasons, but I, I, overall, I think I like the second season just cause it, it gave you a little more to, uh, yeah, sure. to, to work with. more to play with. Yeah, um, absolutely. And also it, I tried to open up into other topics, which you wouldn't want just them to talk about. Um, exactly. So like, for example, um, one of the running themes throughout it is, you know, uh, he, he wants to throw this party and they have this, their friend, Amy, who's played by Tangerine and, she starts um, teasing him that like, okay, I guess, you know, Derek and I, her husband, we're going to be the only black people at the party. And she goes, oh, no, we have lots of black friends. He goes, oh, yeah. And they make a bet about it. And then <laughs> it turns out he doesn't have that many. So he's got to invite. And, and you know, so it becomes a complicated story. Right, and, then, uh, right, right. and then there was a, um, uh, um, oh, and then they have a neighbor who got fired from his job because of a me too thing and then they're oh gee, should we <laughs> should we avoid them because if you know because they're being ostracized by everybody else and if we're still friendly with them they're gonna glom onto us and then i'm gonna have to invite her to your party and he, she's like i don't want a party and you know oh, and boy. but she but the thing was she wants to get friendly with them because she wants the inside story and he's like it's not right, worth it right, I, you know right, right, right. um and then oh, and then we had uh, a scene in a restaurant um with uh, um 
where, where there's this, this lovely Asian uh, server and, and, and um, she accuses him of like liking the, the and, and, and she's like trying to guess what nationality he's like, you can't try and guess an Asian person. It's very offensive. <laughs> so then she tries to turn around. And, I'll, I'll, I'll let the, I'll let the viewers. Uh, yeah, no, I saw it. that. That was very funny. And, 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 yeah. and Paulina who plays that act, who plays that character. I remember she came in at the audition and she just like blew me away. Like how she could be angry and funny, which is one of the other things, great things about Kylie. She could be angry and funny at the same time. There's, um, there's an Asian, um, uh, 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 comic, uh, Ali that Wong. Woman, that woman, is that her name? Yeah, she's. Well, there's, she's, a, there's Aquafina and Ali Wong who both crossed over into movies and TV. Yeah, Aquafina yeah, yeah. I think it's that, Ali um, Wong. That crazy, but, she has yeah. that aggressiveness on stage. Yeah, you know, yeah. she's mean, but yet she's she's funny. You know. Yeah, and yeah. I think she, that's she, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was a great. She is a great stand-up, and now she's sort of transitioned into acting, and she's great at that too. She, she's terrific. so talking about acting. You got a SAG card. I, you know what, I have a, a I guess it's called a lapsed sad, sad card. Come on, I got, come on. I, I got it back in the eighties. I, I did for for one uh, for one role. I, um, uh, uh, Julie Harmon. She's now Julie Harmon Mastronardi, I believe is is, is her okay. name. Okay. I never, okay. I never met Mr. Mastronardi other than on Facebook. But um, so Julie was a producer, is a producer, and she at the time was a producer on America's Most Wanted, and she used to call me once in a while to see if I wanted to do odd jobs like location scouting or whatever and i remember I, back in the days of answering machines i had an answering machine and she's calling and and i'm like i'm busy i've got i'm on deadline I, i'm not going to answer the phone i don't want to do any location scouting and she leaves me a message and she leaves me a message. she goes i wonder if you're busy tomorrow i need someone to play a mobster on america's most Wanted." i'm like to play a mobster <laughs> so I, I, you know, when what what i'll cancel everything you know right so, right right so no audition no nothing she wants me to play this mob boss and uh um and later on, I said, you know, there's a million actors out there. Why did you, uh, you know, think of me? And she goes, well, because we don't have any money for a budget. And you were the one guy I knew who would have a suit that would look like you're a, a mob, wanna, a mobster wannabe, you know, a wannabe gangster. So, so, so in the archives, uh, yeah. God bless video and uh, yeah. God bless the archives because right, uh, we, found the yeah. we found the clip. We found the clip from America's Most Wanted. And uh, 19, I, 1988. So that's uh, 1988, 30, man. 32 years ago. Oh my God, let's take a look. They joined forces with the Mafia, carrying out contract killings for the Gambino family. I want to talk a little bit about our relationship, the way things are going. Do like a little cheese? Oh, no, no, thank you. It's very nice cheese. It smells nice, cheese. yeah. Things are going very, very nice. I'm glad to hear that. We're very pleased. Good. The work your boys are doing on the docks is excellent. Good. You know, we're from two different worlds. That's right. They bring the worlds together. Huh? Absolutely, keep it together. Because you know, I'm here for anything bad to happen. Jimmy, do you play bocce? Um, no, I never played. You know what? I think we're going to teach you. I salute. Slash. <laughs> I salute. <laughs> Did I get nice. that right? Yeah, yeah, of course. You nailed it, man. You nailed it back and in 1988. Come here's, on. Here's, here's the background to it, the, 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 the funny thing. Um, uh, so, so that was about a guy... Um, I can't remember his name, Kevin something, but, but he was with the Westies, with the Irish mob from the uh, West Side. Oh, um, okay. And that's the guy who they were looking for. And I played the guy from the Gambino family who was giving him um, <laughs> his, his, you know, orders or whatever to, to, to shoot this uh, union uh, boss who had, um, you know, fucked up their restaurant. Right. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, Punch right. not... Anyway. After nine so, o'clock, we could say that. So the guy, <laughs> the guy turns himself in, I think, before the episode runs and claims that he got the orders from, from John Gotti. So basically, oh, wow. I was yeah. I was playing John Gotti. You were playing John uh, Gotti. And, I love and it. I'm sure, and I'm sure if he saw it, he's like, I can't believe they got a fat Jew with a receding <laughs> hairline to play me. <laughs> with the that Teflon Don. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, and, and actually... That was the case where he got that name because they tried him and he got off. So that was when he first got the name Teflon Don. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, so fast forward now to present day, uh, you, yeah. you couldn't, you couldn't hold back anymore. You had to, you had to get well, yourself the, the, involved the, the, again. The problem was, uh, I, you know, I got bit by the bug. So I got headshots. I took lessons. Yeah. I, I, and nobody else would hire me. I got that one gig and then I got, I, I did I, that I too, Seth, bug. and nobody hired me. Yeah, nobody, nobody, nobody. And the other thing is, the funny thing is, um, I scratch the VO a lot of times. They call it scratch when you do the temporary VO until they put the real voice in. Right. And 
and I always waited one day that they would like call me, and and uh, and and nobody nobody ever does except once, except once. If you're familiar with um, um, Timon and Pumbaa, you know from uh, the Lion King. Okay. It was, it was a there was a version of it straight to video called the uh, Lion King One and a Half, and it was just about Timon and Pumbaa. And when we got the movie, and this is back when I was at the airport, we got the movie, and everybody was making a joke that I sound just like Pumbaa, Ernie, um, <laughs> Ernie Cabello is the actor. And if, if you're familiar with it, he sounds just like me. I sounded like this before. But, like, I don't even have to, like, try. So I was temping all the spots. All the spots. One day, Ernie Cabello is out of the country, and he's unavailable. And so they use their replacement. And our producer says, uh, that guy, our guy sounds better than him. So yeah, your guy does. And I, I have to tell you, 10 minutes work, two weeks later, I get a check for $1,500. And I'm like, wow. oh, I want to do VO. I've never yeah, been yeah, yeah, right, right. I, I'll, again, I got I'll use bus. my voice. Absolutely. So, so finally, I had to hire myself to be in, in uh, here's the thing. You, you wanna, I'll, I'll tell you some stuff better if you, you want to show it first. The, yeah. Uh, All right. Let, let's, let's take a look. Here's the thing. No, here's the thing. Everybody thinks you're the nice guy and I'm the mean one, but really, you think you're smarter than everybody else. You are such a hypocrite. What are you guys fighting about now? Wait, we have a daughter? Cut. We have a daughter. Yeah, didn't you read the scripts? What, the first draft? What's up? Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> since when do we have a daughter? Since about 15 years ago, I'd say. 14. Oh, you're 12 for your age. Huh, she gets that for me. Right. Uh, what's her name? What's her name? Audrey. Katie. I like Katie. It's a classic. Katie. Katie. I don't get a vote? Yeah, you could have a vote if you read the scripts. <sighs> so how long have you known that we have a daughter? Only like a week. Uh, how long have you known? Well, since table read. Thought the ending was a little flat, so I came up with this. Right. So you just created a daughter. Yeah. Okay. It's like God. Great. Right. Use that. Okay, take two. Uh, uh, where do you want to pick it up? Uh, from Katie entering. Okay. So, from where I say he's a fucking hypocrite? I think he just said hypocrite. Watch your language. Got a kid here. If she's been my daughter for 14 years, it's nothing new. That yeah, makes sense. All right, uh, places. You remember your cue? I wasn't the one who blew the last take. Uh, it's definitely my daughter. We have a kid. Oh, that's kind of exciting. <laughs> Is it? I kind of liked our lives the way they were, you know, freedom, spontaneity. Freedom, spontaneity for our characters, not, not for us. Well, when I'm playing Linda, I feel the feelings that Linda is feeling. And right now, I'm feeling all this added pressure from this responsibility that, quite frankly, I nor she ever asked for. No offense. Right. It's kind of part of the job. Well, so is reading the scripts. Okay, come on, this guy sends us, like, five revisions a day. Yeah, like, tell it. Everything okay? I Perfect. Love oh, I love him. So great. Smart. Mm -hmm. Let's play it. <sighs> and action. You know, everybody thinks you're the nice one and I'm the mean one, but really, you just think that you're smarter than everybody else. You are such a fucking hypocrite. What the fuck are you guys fighting about oh, now? Oh, 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 cut. <laughs> she said it, so I figured I could say it. Mm, maybe don't. Kylie, you neither. Yeah, honey, just because of grown-up stuff, it doesn't really you mean... You know you're not my real father. That's a good point. I don't, I don't... So how do you feel now about having a teenage daughter? Gross. All right, places and action. Everybody thinks you're the nice one and I'm the mean one, but really, you're just a hypocrite. What are you guys fighting about now? Uh, honey, we were fighting. Your father doesn't uh, believe in God. I, it's not that I don't believe in God. He's been keeping it a secret from us all these years. He's protecting us from this terrible truth. And now he's hedging his bet because maybe, okay? just maybe, he's wrong in. again. But if we were talking too loudly, we're, we're sorry. Whatever. <laughs> I have a daughter. I know. And she looks just like me. And nothing like me. Ooh, what? That chair makes me look so fat. Yeah, it's the chair. How'd you sound good? Is your frame is different. No, you know what? I got a better idea. What are you guys fighting about now? Wait, we have a daughter? Cut. We have a daughter? Yeah, didn't you read the scripts? What's up? Is that a new director? <laughs> yeah, I like him better. <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> That's priceless. So, so the funny thing is, yeah. um, so and and people who don't know the series don't know. So they're a couple. We, they've never had a kid, you know, in, in the whole first season and the second season up until that episode, they've never had a kid. After the first season, uh, the, the the young lady and she's played, really good. The the yeah. kid's really good. Yeah, her name's Tanner. I'm not going to try to, her. Her last name is Van. I, That's she's okay. Got a, she's a lovely girl, but a hard to pronounce <laughs> last name. Anyway, she's she's the daughter of a friend of mine, Lynette. And Lynette says to me, Tanner loves your show. 
And I'm like, Tanner's 13. How does she love my show? Like, I, I, I never, exp- I, I made the show for people who are 40 and up, you know, I'd make it. I, mm-hmm. they, so she's no, she loves the show and she wants to play the daughter. And, and Tanner's an actor. So, so I said, they don't have a daughter. And she goes, make a daughter and, and make her the daughter. I'm like, I'm not going to just make a daughter out of, out of thin air. <laughs> so I'm writing the scripts, I'm writing the scripts. And, and I wanted to do this script where, where, um, where um, Linda discovers that Josh doesn't believe in God, but they've been married all these years and they didn't know it. And, you know, I just thought it'd be fun. Right, midway right. through. I'm like, how do I end this thing? You know? And then I'm like, and I'm thinking like, maybe I'll give him a daughter. Maybe I'll, I'll follow Tanner's I mean, Sorry. <laughs> so I write this part and I put it in there. I send the script to um, Kylie and, and, and Shannon and Kylie says, I hate this. I don't want, I don't want to have it. She goes, the whole thing that made the series beautiful is it's a couple. They don't have a kid. It's like the right, honeymoon. They don't have a you know, kid. Have right, a kid. right, right, right. She goes, she goes, this is a betrayal of everything. And I'm like, <laughs> and then I said, Shannon, what do you think? And he goes, well, and, and it's funny. In a way, they're a lot, they're similar. Like Kylie lets you know what she's thinking. Shannon's a little more, mm-hmm. but he goes like, it's not my favorite of the script. So neither one of them liked it. And I'm like, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. So, so, Kid, so, you're out. <laughs> so, so, uh, but, but, but I just, uh, you know, I wanted to do it. I love right. meta things. I love things where, and, but I got to tell you something. So, so I loved it. I think it works great. But I cringe every time I come on the screen because I'm I'm not a good actor. And nah, it, I, it, I, I I think it doesn't it doesn't show so much. Yeah. It doesn't I mean, show so much. Natural, that it's most wanted. Very natural. Uh, I, but next to the real actors, I feel like I I, I feel like I I see myself acting, and I was like, I can't even play me, you know. And and, and I got <laughs> such a respect now when people go like, oh, he's just playing himself, and I'm like, yeah, try that. It's not so easy. It's I, not so I feel easy. like. I feel like I uh, I I cringe, but but yeah, but they were yeah. good sports. But to, but to this day, in fact, I I emailed them to both watch. So if they're watching now, I I'm, I'm sorry I made you do it, but I I love that episode. Yeah, no, that that was great, and <laughs> uh, you know, please uh, watch. Here's the thing. Uh, it's on uh, it's on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, and, and uh, here's the thing. Web series is uh, here's the thing. Web series, right? And if you can't find it, email George. He'll He'll hook it up. Yeah, it sure. No problem. Just you email me. <laughs> My yeah, staff right. will take care of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hey, Seth, it was it was really great having you well, on. Thank you. I you, really you appreciate just you right because we're just losing the sun. I now. think we're going to lose the sun here in a minute, and uh, you know, uh, here goes the great. sun. That'll I mean, be, uh, uh, you're sun. gonna you're gonna take a dip now and uh, get get relaxed. Uh, yeah. You played golf today. Look at you. I did my first time since the, uh, since the, um, Oh really? Played, since the lockdown. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I played golf with the guy who edited the expanse piece, Clay oh. Janicki, and, the, and the guy who edited the, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm piece. Uh, All Alex right. All Hi right. Alex. Hi Clay. If you're watching. <laughs> well, no, seriously. Uh, thanks for stopping by, uh, and making time. Uh, this was right. great. Uh, and, and, I, and I hope we answered the question that all my friends who I sent links to I and said, so. you should watch this. The question they asked is, why does he want you on? What is he going to talk to you about? So look at that. We're still <laughs> an hour and change. <laughs> well, I think uh, you made a friend in uh, Salicito because he wants to hang out with you. Okay, he's well, a, he's also a writer. Uh, okay. And, you know, he uh, helps is he an me East Coast with guy this. Or West Coast guy? Uh, presently, uh, he's a, uh, a West Coast guy. He lives in Vegas. Uh, oh, oh, okay. You told me about it. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and he's also a writer. Um, nice. and, uh, you know, Hey, you two guys should hook up. Cause I think, yeah. uh, we'll you hang know, out on zoom. Cause you know, you, hang people, out on zoom for people will never get, be uh, close uh, anymore, but uh, you know, exactly. We, exactly. We, we always have zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks again, uh, Seth Thank and, you. and uh, have a, have a great rest of your day. Uh, I'd always love to see sunshine when it's uh, 10 o'clock uh, East. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks again. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay right there. Wow. That was amazing. Uh, Seth was great. Uh, he, uh, we learned a lot tonight about uh, promotional uh, trailers and uh, how it's produced and what he's working on. And, and uh, here's the thing. And, you know, we, I'm sure there'll be a third season, uh, you know, coming up. But uh, look for it on uh, YouTube. Um, Here's the thing, a web series. Uh, You can also follow me on Twitch. Uh, And uh, also, I have a YouTube uh, channel, uh, Buzz Talk Live, where I post some, uh, you know, show clips up there. And uh, you can also visit that channel as well. Uh, Tuesday, Toss Up, uh, we're going to we're going to talk to a a woman, uh, an actress, uh, 
uh, Faye Vett McQueen, who uh, is an actress, dancer, and stunt woman. So she has a lot to say. She has a big background in what she does. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And that's at 9 p.m. on Tuesday. Thank you for watching, and good night, America. Thank you.